Hi guys, welcome back to 100% Mag. So I hope you're all staying safe and well out there. And of course, there's been a lot of Newcastle United news over the last few days since the Cup final against Manchester United down at Wembley. Uh, and we are, of course, going into our first Premier League game uh, since that Cup final as well tomorrow. Uh, half 12 kickoff against Manchester City at the Etihad or the Empty Had, uh, as some like to call it. Uh, and of course if you haven't checked out the preview for that one do go check that out but in this video today we are going to be covering all of the new Cassie United news that has come out of course in them days uh, starting with of course the news that the Sun put out in an article now I'm going to put my spin on this and I'm going to give you my thoughts on this article now I feel to be honest this article is just absolute cobs wallop just absolute crap. Uh, it's just there to make clicks for the Sun newspaper. That is all this article is there for. I mean, literally, the whole reasoning behind this article is them saying that the Premier League need to go and reinvestigate or take over. Now, that is not going to happen. And the reason it's not going to happen is this. Uh, the fact that Manchester City have a similar... Uh, structure at their club with their takeover when they took over uh, their chairman as it is uh, Masood of course is the deputy prime minister of the United Arab Emirates uh, and the reason in behind them saying that our takeover needs to be reinvestigated is that Yasser al-Rahmani is a part of the Saudi government now Yes, of course, he's a part of the Saudi government. That is the title that he has to take as being part of the head of PIF, uh, the Saudi Public Investment Fund. That is the title that he has to take. He has to be on the Saudi government uh, because of that. Just like uh, Sheikh Monsieur at Manchester City has to be the deputy prime minister of uh, the United Arab Emirates. That is how their countries run. That is how uh, they do their business in the Middle East. It's the same as, say, for instance, you know, Crystal Palace having owners from Delaware uh, and them not having to disclose uh, who they are. That is the law in Delaware that they do that. And that is the same law in Saudi Arabia that they are on a public investment fund. They are on a fund that is... You know a massive fund in their country and so for that reason they have to have the title of you know deputy prime minister in Sheikh Mansour's case and you know a role on the Saudi government in a uh, you know Yasser al-Rahmani's case but also uh, they're sparking that because of of course a court case that is happening in the US um, which is of course the Live Twa, uh, which is, of course, the Saudi version uh, of the PGA. Uh, if you don't know what the PGA is, that, of course, is the Professional Golf Association. Uh, you know, everybody should know that one. Uh, but they are the go-to uh, one for, of course, golf, uh, which is obviously quite a popular sport in America. Uh, obviously we were create as of it but it is quite a popular sport in america uh, and live to of course are trying to compete with that now the americans are obviously getting very upset because of what live to is doing and that is of course trying their best to push over into of course now trying to hit it at newcastle united as well like most things you know they always try to find some way to twist it on its head and make it about Newcastle United uh, it just seems to be the way it is uh, and that is because of course there's been a Premier League boss that's actually come out and uh, you know said uh, that with disbelief and anger uh, you know now expect the masters and prem bosses to react uh, one club boss said this looks like a complete reversal of the positions we were told was the reason the deal was approved. Surely the Premier League has to get involved here and look at this issue again. A Prem spokesman uh, last night declined uh, to make any comment when asked to respond uh, to the latest development on it. So, you know, the Premier League's not wanting to respond uh, to it. So, therefore, 
you know, it's just absolute bull crap and I wouldn't take any notice of it whatsoever. Uh, what I would take notice of though is of course the fact that we have gotten rid of some members off of the board. Uh, one of them being of course uh, Majid al Saw, uh, who is part of the Saudi Gulf. He has stepped down from his position uh, at Saudi Gulf and NUFC. Um, I don't know the reasoning behind that. You know, maybe it is a personal reason that he has stepped down from that. But uh, Majed Al Saw has stepped down from uh, being, of course, part of Saudi Gulf and NUFC. Uh, so that has opened up a place, of course, on our board for some more people to come in. And, of course, we've had two new appointments to the board uh, these have been shown on company house of course uh, one of them is a woman called asma uh, razig uh, i believe i pronounced that right sorry if i have butchered the name uh, but a fantastic portfolio she's got you will be able to see it up on screen of course i would read it out but there's quite a bit there uh, so you can pause the video and read about uh, what she has done in her career but some fantastic stuff uh, that she has done in a career of course all public investment uh, fund related and then a guy who has been appointed to the board of course uh, who is called Abdul Majad uh, Al Hagbani I believe that is how it's pronounced again I do apologize if I have butchered that name but again you know a massive portfolio some fantastic stuff that he has done in his career so far uh, senior manager head of securities investments in the middle east and north africa at the public investment fund since may 2018 kingdom of saudi arabia uh, and so many other things again you can pause uh, the video and see exactly what uh, he has done in his career and like i say some fantastic minds are coming onto the board and it's just great to see you know that club is going in the right direction we're getting some brilliant minds running the club now uh it's crazy you know when you think back to the way it was being run under the previous regime where we had you know at most maybe three people on the board then it went down to just one person doing it which was penny fold and you know he was barely doing anything to be honest uh but now we've got maybe three four five or six you know people running this club uh, behind the scenes you've got amanda stave you've got kadassi you know you've got jamie rubin you've got the rubin brothers uh you've got yasa al romani you know and then you've got these two uh coming in now in running the club as well not to mention the likes of dan ashworth uh darren Neals as well who's uh the ceo for we uh, and then of course we've got Peter Silverstone in there as well and then you've got the coaching team in Eddie Howe, Jason Tyndall, Graham Jones you know and all of the others uh, behind of course them as well so a fantastic group of people are leading this club we're going in the right direction now and we are finally being run like an actual football team instead of the way we were being run you know on shoestring budget and there's one more I add to that as well come july uh when newcastle add paul mclaren uh as the new head of scouting uh he was of course the youth scout at manchester city currently is still at the moment uh, but he will take up his new job at newcastle united in july so he'll be available of course to take up that head of uh scouting for newcastle next season that will be interesting to see what uh, he can bring to the table for Newcastle United but what does that mean for Steve Nixon as he is our current head of scouting uh, so does that mean that it is the end for Steve Nixon at Newcastle United or will he go further up uh, only time will tell at the moment because nothing has really been said on the Steve Nixon front but hopefully um, you know we'll be seeing a little bit more news on that one but it's nice to see these new appointments to the board and also new appointments uh, of course to the scouting team because this is what we need to do if we want to progress forward I mean if um, we want to do what Amanda Stavely put out there after the cup final you know going out winning the Caribou Cup winning the FA Cup uh, winning the Premier League Champions League you know winning God knows how many cups, you know, then we need to have the right minds leading this team forward. Uh, there is also news saying that Newcastle are looking at a similar approach to what Man City have done as well. 
uh, with Newcastle looking to build a multi-club model uh, around Newcastle. And um, we'll have held preliminary talks uh, and discussions with French club Dijon uh, over a potential investment. There has also been links with Polish club Slazek uh, Krakow, I believe it is pronounced. And there's also talks with a bunch of other clubs as well. Uh, so that is another uh, thing that we are going and looking at to, of course, increase the revenue at Newcastle United because that is the focus and Amanda Savely as well was doing the Financial Times Business Summit uh, and of course she came out and said that uh, she's played down the chances of PIF investing in Man United as there has been news circulating around about that from Man United fans trying to force it in trying to get you know the investment for their club that is not the case uh, Amanda Stavely has played it down uh, and she says that of course Newcastle have always been the long-term investment uh, for PIF there is no interest in any other club but Newcastle United uh, and they never you know wanted to buy anybody else other than us uh, so it's fantastic to see you know that they are fully backing uh, our team and they're fully behind the area as well as Newcastle United and of course Amanda Stavely even put confirmation out there that the documentary for Amazon uh, of course we're doing everything we can to grow our commercial revenue with FFP she tells the financial uh, business of football summit and of course uh, she confirmed that documentary with Amazon it looks like it's not going to be an all or nothing documentary it looks like it is going to be a solo uh, four part I think it was they said a documentary on Newcastle United uh, and they've only been recording since I think about January uh, this year so you know that's going to be an interesting one to see what happens there uh, there was even talk from other people on Twitter as well Newcastle fans talk of say put up a post uh you know confirming saying that a uh, further confirmations of the documentary of our season cameras were in trafalgar square on the saturday night when newcastle fans were absolutely packed out in trafalgar square ahead of the cup final and uh, mark douglas as well coming out and you know confirming what amanda stavely had said at the uh, financial times business of football summit and of course uh there is some talk as well uh, in an article from 90 Minutes uh, saying Newcastle pressing ahead with ambitious 2023 investment plans. This coming from Craig, uh, Graham Bailey. Uh, he, of course, come out and, you know, said Newcastle pushing ahead with ambitious 2023 investment plans on uh, pitch. They will be looking to bolster squad heavily this summer, which is what we've already known. You know, we will be spending massive in the summer. Uh, even more so if we do get that Champions League football because that will allow for even more spendage in the summer window uh, and a multi-club structure of course like I just talked about uh, of course allowing for us to be able to expand out around as well like Man City have the City group uh, you know and they have teams in Australia they have a team in America uh, they have you know teams in a number of different countries around uh, the world and this is so of course you can send your players your younger players you know away to these countries get them their experience in first team games uh, or you know also help with getting them work permits for of course players that might have a trouble getting a work permit for of course to play in uh, the premier league but some fantastic news. Um, let us know your thoughts down in the comments below about everything said in this video today. Like I say, there was a lot to go through in this video. And I do want to cover something as well before I end off this video. I do want to say uh, whoever is responsible for running Sky Sports News' Twitter account, uh, they need to work on turning off the comments uh, because there was quite a lot of very negative disrespectful comments towards uh, Amanda Stavely's looks towards Amanda Stavely's illness uh, of course we all know Amanda Stavely has Huntington's disease and it is a very uh, horrible disease it degenerates uh, of course 
your body over time as you grow older and of course Amanda Stavely is a sufferer of that and she was getting a lot of stick uh, in of course comments not that she will see them comments but it's just the fact that you know them comments are being made it's not great to see uh, you know somebody like Sky Sports News uh, who are quite a high regard uh, for you know a source to go to get sports news and they're allowing them kind of comments to be made there was misogynist comments there as well uh, so whoever is responsible uh, for doing the social media accounts for you know these companies like Sky Sports News then they do definitely need to be looking at the comments because there was quite a few uh, comments in there like I say uh, misogynist comments and very disgusting comments towards Amanda Stavely's looks uh, but I just needed to get that off my chest of course but Till next time, remember to hit that like, share, subscribe if any of this news in this video has been of note to you. And I'll see you all next time. How are the lads?